Mercer County sitting alongside Chuck Lambert, the head coach of the Montcalm Generals here in Mercer County as we continue to talk with the Class A coaches of the uh, area. And Chuck, welcome aboard tonight. Thank you. Glad to be here. And of course, we want to talk to you about the Generals. And of course, this is your first year coming in over there. And uh, last year was a very off year. You've been into a re real rebuilding program, but I think that you've seen some uh, real signs of life. Well, we're a uh, very young team, and uh, it takes time. Every time the other coaches change, it makes, uh, it makes a lot of difference with the players and their attitudes and so forth. But everything's been going well for us. We just have very inexperienced players, as I said, and one senior on the entire team. And we're looking forward to next year. Hopefully, we can win a few this year. Well, you know, Rome wasn't built on the day. I guess you walk before you run, and then I guess it's pretty hard to get that across to your ball first, though, isn't it? Well, I think faith is something that uh, it's hard uh, for young people to accept nowadays. And, uh, Everyone wants that success. If you just don't get it in basketball, you have to get the fundamentals first, then the success comes later. If you would, uh, we'd like to have you mention some of your ball players and possibly tell us a little bit about them, especially your uh, senior and your junior that are playing a lot for you. Well, I'd be glad to. We have one senior, and uh, this boy is way dark for us, Terry O'Donnell. And then uh, we only have, uh, we've got a few uh, juniors that play for us. Uh, Frankie Harvey is a junior playing guard. Ricky Young is a sophomore playing guard. And those three fellows do most of the guards uh, uh, position for us. And then the inside, we've got a, a junior that has played basketball before by the name of Blaine Farmer, who's a big kid, about 6'4", moves well, a natural athlete. I, I think that uh, by next year, he'll be a pretty good player. Playing the forward position, I've uh, got uh, uh, two sophomores, uh, Roger Belcher, about six two and a half, and Barry Bailey, about six feet. And two uh, juniors, Lewis Eller, around 5'11", and Henry Dinger, who's about 5'11". So we'll pretty well uh, balanced in overall uh, people that we have. Now, we, don't, we have uh, 10 people out. Uh, previously, we only had eight for the semester, but we have another little fellow that plays with us and uh, picked up a, kid, a guy out of the CE class to make a 10. And uh, the fifth, but these eight do most of the play for us. One of the problems that, that you've got in trying to rebuild in Mercer County is that competition is very strong here. Uh, many times, our class A teams do not get the recognition across the state because you guys chop each other up so badly. Well, I've been in this area for 21 years. And I've started to fly more and move around a little bit. And uh, I, I can say this, that the Class A competition in the area this year is kind of balanced as I've ever seen. I think anyone can beat anyone. Now, we've got two uh, maybe predominant teams, and that's Petersham and Isaac. But I think they're capable of being beaten by any one of the other teams. And certainly we hope that when one of us gets out of here that we make a good representation in the state tournament. Well, usually our teams that come out of the area do make a, a real good showing in the state tournament. But many of the times the rating services kind of ignore some of our teams because of the... It's hard to win on the road. And as an example, you mentioned that and being the team, they had Joe Allen taking the task over Matoka not very long ago. That's correct. And uh, like I say, anything can happen in, in basketball. And we never say we can't do anything because it could the possibilities there. Uh, I think the uh, publicity that, that we get uh, in our in our local coverage is probably as good as we could expect. I think uh, a lot of times we're overlooked as big small schools, but you know, uh, I've been on both levels, and uh, I think it's just as important to coach in a small school as probably harder than on the on the AAA level because uh, you, your players have to be taught on a small school more. Well, of course, as a coach on a small uh, school level, uh, you end up doing so much. That's not really considered coaching, you know. You, you keep track of the shoes, you keep going for the laundry, you <laughs> paint the gym for a time. Well, that's true, and uh, we know that's part of the game, and uh, we accept it. Uh, I feel this that uh, we have to spend time with a player. It takes us maybe two years to get him ready to play, and uh, we have to use, we have to get the benefit of that. We have to have him as a senior. You know, that's what happened to Montcalm this year. We had three or four seniors that did not want to play or got married or something that happened along the way. We're just in a bad shape in that position. So we've got to keep our kids long, you know, and work with them and hope that by the time they're seniors they can develop and play it the brand of basketball that we hope they can. How much of a problem is it for your program to not have a home gym? Uh, you got to get on a bus, take a bus ride for practice, and uh, I just kind of, they the game kick went yeah. up, you cut it short, and then I guess weekends it really gives you problem. Well, it's upsetting to us. Uh, basically because we have to move out and go out in the cold and then come back. And our kids live, you know, quite this from the school. But we do have some help with uh, the vehicles. And, uh, and we practice here in the armory every day. In fact, Princeton was here a little bit with us yesterday before we got here, so we waited on them. But uh, we practice here every day that we can. Now, our gym's so small that 
we can't do anything in there. We can't play, we can't work any kind of formation or anything. So we leave the junior out of there, and it always come out here. Of course, now, and this does give you a, a little bit of a, a problem, I guess, just on the spontaneous. A lot of youngsters learn a lot of basketball on the spontaneous pickup games. If the coaches told them uh, to work on a couple of moves, and you get one on one, two on two, the kids can learn a lot just by finding out what they can do, and you miss that, don't you? Right. I think the biggest change in basketball since I've been in the area is the fact that all coaches now are working with their kids most of the year. And if you don't play, uh, you're going you're to suffer as a result. I think the coaching is getting much better. The guys are, the young guys are learning more about the game. They're coaching a better game. Those old folks are just going to have to get in there and get back with them, I guess. But that takes a lot of hours, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And uh, I, I, my family has suffered in the past. And, uh, but I, it's something that I do again if I had the opportunity. And I continue to. I've got a few more years left. I, I'm real happy to be over here back in West Virginia. <laughs> have your family send you a photo from your vacation that you're back home working with their family. Well, right. Well, I have a son, one son, and I, I didn't see him very much at seeing Blue Hill High, and, uh, and I've got another daughter and a young one now, and I'm seeing more of them simply because I don't have the responsibility of football. Of course, I think also you probably get a lot of uh, self-satisfaction out of the fact that you see youngsters come out. That, and I, I'm not saying it to uh, downgrade anybody's talent, but sometimes the youngster has trouble getting back and forth across the free throw line as a sophomore. Then as a junior, he's starting to set that low post. And as a senior, he's starting to roll out that 14, 15 foot high post. You've got to feel good to see the youngsters progress like this. And I, I saw you in a Christmas tournament, and the big boys you're talking about has made a lot of progress. Yeah, he, he never played basketball before. He this is his first year out, and now he's beginning to dump the ball and he began to move a little better, began to fake and he's understand you know, he understands what the game is about, he's been telling the boy. And I think in coaching this is the only thing we really receive from coaching is the satisfaction of seeing that happen. Okay, we're gonna talk for the national anthem and we're gonna be right back and Chuck Stay with us gonna talk to you this moment. <laughs> Kurgle sitting in on the shop chart tonight. Kurgle, welcome aboard. 
Thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing a fine ball game here from the uh, from the two to the state champions. Double and triple A. And that's right. And also, uh, Preston rated number one in the area ratings this morning and Northbrook number two. Well, that's, Ooh, we got a lot going. Well, that's something we'll, we'll give a little more incentive to this game. I think I'll put it five. Okay, and Bob, you've got some season stats for us. Well, in terms of the individual players for Prince and Jimmy Miller, they're still averaging right about 22.8 points a game for the season. But Jimmy has been very consistent. I think he's had one game with 30 points, but he's been right around at 21, 22, 23, 24 months in every game this season that Prince has played. Jeff St. Clair has been averaging 8.1. Of course, Jeff, the playmaking love. Mike Eads, who's averaging 14.1. Bill Harvard, 7.2. Stephon Murray, who had two good games last week, he's averaging 4.2. James DeWitt, the sophomore, is averaging 12 points a game. And Hans Parker is averaging 3.7. And we understand that Hans Parker was, uh, to some extent, ill most of last week. I think he see a whole lot of action. That's right. That's what uh, Coach Paul was telling me prior to the game tonight. And, uh, of course, he didn't uh, think about it earlier. And, uh, of course, Northport put some changes in their lineup tonight, starting Kenny White, Mark Glenn, Jesse Fields, Kenny Brown, and Michael Boyd as Jimmy's boy very upset with the way they played down Huntington the other night, pulling some rosters off of it. But hey, that changed the lineup again. What they start? Hey, I think they're gonna start uh, William Foster, Robert Foster, Dwayne Spencer, Kenny Brown, and Michael Boyd. And Jesse Fields will not I don't have start. a William Foster. Uh, number forty two. Jesse Fields is 42. Okay, 14. That's and Henry Hall. Okay, well, I copied this right out of the official. Oh, okay. No, I don't see number 14. No, I don't either. All right. Let's see. We got it 44 out there, and that's Kenny Brown. And we got 42 is Jesse Fields. We know him. And 24 is Mark Glenn. And it's right. tipped and by the Tigers as Miller tips it backwards to Harmon. Harmon puts it on the floor, takes it to the front court. The Tigers go on offense to start the game. And St. Clair way out front with the ease on the left side, on the wing, holds it overhead, looks underneath. As Miller comes rolling around, they go underneath to the whip, puts the shot up, parts his block, rebound comes down to the Blue Demons. And pulling out with Kenny White. White goes to the front court with it, throws it underneath. To Jesse Fields, and Fields looks at the bucket, he'll fire. Off the iron, no good, rebound, front court knocked out of bounds, it'll be North Park ball. As to inbound it will be Jesse Fields. As Fields. Inbounded. He gets it in to Mark Glenn, as Glenn puts it on the floor twice, jump shot, 17 feet good. 17 feet left side, hits a 2 to nothing. Tigers trail. As Mike... He brings it to the front court for Princeton, gives it to St. Clair, as Norfolk in a man-to-man -man defense. To the wit on the wing, left side, holds it overhead, we got a whistle and a foul underneath. And St. Clair charging, I believe, we'll see what they got on it. It is on Jeff St. Clair charging, and they gave off the pass. That's number one on Jeff, team foul number one on the Tigers. That's Michael Boyd. And Mark Glenn will bring it to the front court for Northport. Glenn with the ball, dribbling, moves it right to the top of the key, moves it to the left side of the field, gives it back to Glenn, they go to Boyd on the far side. He's on the wing position, looks underneath. Gets it in the corner to Fields, back outside to Glenn. He's looking at the bucket, back to Field, and they come across court with it. As they can't get the shot open, as Michael, as Glenn, dribbling with it, way out front right now. As they go underneath, well, it puts the shot up, no good. Rebound, pulled down by the Tigers. As Kenny Bound puts the shot up, no good, and the Tigers running. Up to Miller, goes down, lays it up to us. Kenny Miller gets the Tigers on the board. We've got a 2 2 ball game. As Northport comes back now, back Glenn with the ball, on the dribble. Leaves it for Boyd as Michael brings it to the left side to Jesse Fields. He's on the dribble, backs his way in, gives it back across court to Glenn, and Mark takes it into the corner. Into the corner with it to Fields, fine, good. Jesse Fields, deep out of the corner, puts him in the net. Corner to the Tigers trailing. And Jeff St. Clair brings it to the front court for the Tigers. They go to Harmon on the high post, drops it to the wet underneath, lost it out of bounds. And they had Harmon breaking on the back door and couldn't connect. 42, Tigers turning as Michael Boyd brings it to the front court for the North Coast Blue Demons. Still on the dribble with it, right hand dribble, holds it up now to the near side to Jesse Fields. He gives it back to Boyd, top of the key with it to Mark Glenn. Goes down, he'll fly from 18 feet off the iron, no good rebound. Buck four, put back up and he up by the Demons. Now he's out off by Miller. As Fields put it back up, couldn't hold it. Out to St. Clair, the Tigers running to the east in the front court, it's kicked out of bounds. And they call it out to the Tigers. And I thought that may went off of Mike's foot. I think it went off Ken White's foot. Uh, he's off on the foot, though. So the Tigers will have it out of bounds. In the corner, I my own bucket, the inbound pass comes into Eads to St. Clair, top of the key. Holds it overhead, looks underneath. Now he backs it out front. 
Howdy. Dean was in a man-to-man -man defense. How they got Harmon on the high post. And Harmon fired from the free throw line. In, out, and in. Hung it on the glass and the board and dropped it. Four to four now. As the Tigers set up that defense as Michael Boyd brings it to the front quarter. 2-3 zone for the Tigers right now. Jesse Fields with the ball for North Park. To Michael Boyd. To Mark Glenn. And Glenn into the corner with it to Fields. Firing out of the corner. Good. Jesse Fields from 18 feet. 20 feet. Out of the corner. Drops it. Six to four. Tigers trail by two. St. Clair to the front court with it for Preston. The left side of the width. Way out on the wing. Holds it up in one hand. Now he puts it on the floor. To Miller on the low post. Loose it out of bounds. As Jimmy breaking out. Did not handle the ball. Six to four. Tigers charge with the turnover. They trail by two. As Michael Boyd brings it to the front court. And that's four turnovers against the Tigers already. And Boyd now firing without the key. Off the iron. No good. Rebound pulled down by North Park. As Brown puts it up. It's partially blocked. Puts it up again. Miller blocks it again. Now we got a foul. As Miller blocks him twice. And on the second time, the official said he blocked Brown rather than the ball. And it'll be a two-shot foul for Kenny Brown. And that's number one on Jimmy. Kenny foul number two on the Tigers. How many uh, turnovers no for Craig? Good. No turnovers. As Brown fires the first one, it's no good. He'll have the second attempt. As Brown will fire once more. He fires. It's good. 7-4. Tigers trailing now by three. As Mike East moves it up the right side for the Tigers on the left-hand dribble. Goes across the top of the key, into the lane with it. Drops it underneath to St. Clair on the baseline. Jeff in traffic. Gets it out to East. Top of the key. Takes the shot. Can't get it away. Gives it back to St. Clair. St. Clair on the point now. The middle on the high post. Works on Brown. Goes around him. Lays it up. We got a whistle. That bucket will be no good as Brown found him on the drive. And on Brown, that'll be number one. Team foul number one on the Demons. It'll be Tiger ball out of bounds on the baseline. And they got Jimmy isolated one-on-one -on -one with Kenny Brown. And Jimmy went to the bucket. But he was fouled on the way. As the wood inbounds to Dean, firing out of the corner off the iron, no good. Rebound pulled out by Norfolk. As Mark Land pulls it down. Brings it to the front court for the demon. Still on the dribble with it. To the near side to Fields. Fields will fire off the side iron, no good. And Miller rebounds is skying up to bring it down. Kicks it outside to Bill Harmon. Harmon into the front court with it. To the wit. Lays up in. A smooth, fast, great play is the wit. Going under smooth with the lad up. Took the ball in midair, later riding up the glass, and the Tigers are down by one, seven to six. As Michael Boyd with the ball for the Demons to Mark Glenn, to Jesse Fields deep in the corner. Gives it outside to Boyd, back to Fields, and to Kenny Brown. And Brown brings it back outside now as Boyd comes across the top of the key to Mark Glenn, to Jesse Fields deep in the corner. He'll fire out of there. Off the eye, no good. Rebound. Uh, and his foul is uh, St. Clair contesting for the rebound. Foul from behind by Mark Glenn. That's number one on Glenn. Team foul number two on the Demons. It'll be Tiger Ball out of bounds in the backcourt. As the wit will inbound it for the Tigers. Gets it into St. Clair. Yeah. We'll take it to the front court. On the dribble with it. To the right side to Eads on the wing position. Starts it toward the corner. Holds it up now to the wit outside. As the wit spins one time. Leaves it for Eads. Eads goes into the lane. Drives it to the lane. Puts the shot up. No good off the glass. Rebound. Comes out to the Demons. Out the board to their lane. As he had help. Couldn't get anything with it. As Boyd gets it into Fields, he puts it up and in. On a deflected pass, the Fields pulled out here and threw in. Nine to six, Tigers trailing by three. And gets St. Clair to the front court with it for Preston. To the wit, starts it down the left side, goes to the baseline, fires, good. As the wit, making his presence known, puts it in as he was right over top of Kenny White. As the Demons come back now, the Tigers trailing by one. Jesse feels the ball. They go to Brown on the baseline. It's taken away in there by Miller. Gets it out to Harmon. Harmon into the front court. He's got help. He drives. Lays it up. No good. We got a whistle with foul on Harmon. That's number one on Bill. Team foul number three on the Tigers. As the Tigers had a three on two fast break and got called for the charging foul. So we'll have Michael Boyd bring it to the front court for North Fork. Tigers. Trail by one, nine to eight. As Michael Boyd to the right side with it, to Mark Glenn. He gives it back to Boyd. He comes to the near side to Kenny White. White gives it back to Boyd. He's on the point position now. Tiger's playing his own defense. As Boyd, side the key to White. To, to Glenn, finding out the corner over the rebound in the lane by St. Clair. The Tiger's control. As St. Clair goes out, laying with it. Tries to get it easy. He's got to put it on the glass. Got it. As the Tiger's trying to freaking got another three out two. That time they can boot and take the lead. Ten to nine. As Michael Boyd brings it to the front court for the Demons. To the left side to Kenny White. And White into the corner with it to Boyd. As Boyd lifts the bucket, gets it back outside. And Mark Glenn with the ball out front. And they get it to Brown deep in the corner. He gets it back outside to Glenn. Glenn to Boyd, and he fires. St. Clair may have got a piece of it. He may have got a piece of it. Rebound comes off to Jesse Fields of Northport. 
This is outside the Glen. Mark will start to play all over again. To Brown and to Fields. The Fields in the corner now. He'll fire from 20 feet. Good. Jesse Fields deadly out of that corner. 11 to 10. Tigers throw by one. As Jeff St. Clair will take it to the front court for Princeton. The Mike Eads in the corner. Eads lifts the bucket. Now he's looking for somebody to break open. Gives it to DeWitt, and we got a five-second call. And they'll jump it in the Tiger free throw circle as Eads and Mark Glenn. That's not a turnover. That's just a half a turnover. Well, we'll see how it comes out of the jump. Huh? <laughs> as Eads moves in the jump. Glenn moves in, the toss is in the air, and the tip control for the Demons. That's pulling it down is Michael Boyd out to Jesse Fields. He goes down for the slam dunk. Jesse Fields, slam dunks it. 13 to 10, the Tigers three points down. As Mike Keyes into the front court with a full Princeton. Looking underneath, we got a whip on a foul on the whip. As the whip commits the offensive foul. And then on the whip is number one, team foul number four on the Tigers. 13 to 10, and Norfolk with the ball. Tigers trailing. And Michael Boyd brings it to the front court. To the left side to Kenny White. Outside the boys. Goes across the top of the key. Tigers in a 2 3 zone. To Mark Glenn. Deep in the corner with it to White. Firing out of that corner. Off the iron. No good. Miller rebounds for the Tigers. Good spray off. Gets it out to Eads. Eads moves it to the front court now. No fast break attempt to the 3 on 3, but the Whit lays it up in there anyway. A beautiful feed from Mike Eads. Mike Eads made the play. 13 to 12. Tigers down by one. And Kenny White brings it to the front court for North Fork. Out front with it to Michael Boyd. To Jesse Fields, we got a traveling ball. And the Tigers will have it out of bounds. 13 to 12, Tigers trail by one. We got 46 seconds left to play in the first quarter. As Bill Harmon will end down it for the Tigers. And Michael Boyd will press Jeff St. Clair. Now he releases and Jeff will move it to the front court for the Tigers. Still on the dribble with it. Across the top of the key. They go to Miller on the baseline. Miller fake. Puts it up. It's not where he is fouled. That foul will be on Jesse Fields. And that's number one on Jesse. Team foul number three on the Dalen. Oh, he called that check. That's not on Jesse Fields. He called it on Kenny Brown. Number 44 rather than 42, Bob. Number two on uh, Kenny Brown. All right. Jimmy Miller on the line. He'll shoot two. As Miller will fire with the right hand. 37 seconds to play in the first quarter. Jimmy fires this no good. 13 12. Tigers trail by one with 37 seconds to play in the first quarter. As Jimmy will have one more attempt at it. If he squares away from the line, get those feet set. He's ready. It's on the way and good. 13 13. We got a tie ball game. And he'll have to pull the net down. That was Bill Harmon. Richie Button does that score. And the Tigers will press. As the inbound pass going by Eads, he goes to Miller on the low post. Spinning in the lane, fires his foul. It didn't drop. The boy almost there, but Jimmy is foul. And this one is on Kenny Brown again. And that's three on Kenny. And that'll put Jimmy on the line to shoot two more. Team foul number four on the Demon. 13 to 13 with 33 seconds to play in the first quarter. Jimmy Miller on the line for Preston Fires. It is on the line, on the iron, no good. He got the final the eye, bounced away. He'll have a second attempt. As round ball looked away from the floor there for a minute. To, uh, Jimmy's missed two free throws in the first quarter. Jimmy fired good. 14-13. Tigers up and they'll press again now. As the inbound pass hits away again. Going by Miller. Tips away and he picks it up. Tigers control with 30 seconds to play in the first quarter. 14-13. Bill is to hit as the ball on the far side. On the wing, comes across the top of the key. He fires from 17 feet. Good. The hit puts it in. 16 to 13. Tigers up, and we got a double dribble on Michael Boyd and the Demons is going to the front court. And that's right. He just put the hands on it as he wanted to pass and then didn't get the handle on it. 12 seconds to play in the first quarter as he gets it into the whip. The whip moves it to the front court. Takes it to the left side. Drops it to Miller on the post. Fires on the glass over with Miller rebound. And it's not the way we got a whistle on the final long line. It's on Brown again, I believe, or is that Jesse Fields? I think it's Brown. If it is on Brown, it's his fourth foul. And it is. It is on Kenny Brown. And it'll be number four on Kenny. And it'll put Jimmy Miller on the line again. That's team foul number five on the Demons. And Jimmy Miller will be on the line. He'll shoot two shots. Tigers will be in the one and one for the rest of the half. Right. Hey, Jimmy, ready. He'll put it up with the right hand. He fires. It's good. We'll have a second attempt. And it's Miller ready to fire again. 
17 13. Tigers up by four now. Jimmy fired it in and out. No good. Rebound pulled down by the Demons. Out to Boyd. Throws it for full court. And the buzzer. No good. Final four of the first quarter. Princeton 17. North for 13. Okay. Uh, we're back at the Army. The Tigers leading it in the first quarter. 17 13. I've got some uh, statistics in the first half. So far, it's been the Jesse Fields, uh, James DeWitt show because uh, James, James DeWitt has eight points on four buckets and Jesse Fields has ten points on five buckets. Other scores for Prince are Jimmy Miller with uh, five points, Mike East two, and Bill Harmon with two. The other scorer for uh, Northport is Mark Lee with two, Kenny Brown with uh, one for two at Fallon. The Tigers shot an incredible 64% in that first quarter compared to North Fork only 40%. All right. North Fork comes in with a new team as they've got Harmon, uh, Foster, People, Spencer, and Crenshaw in. As Miller moves in to jump, and he'll be jumping against Crenshaw. Check his jump against Spencer, and a tip control by the Tigers as Harmon comes away with it. Moving to the front court, to the right side of the win, on the wing position. Foster, and they double team, he gets it over to Harmon, goes to the lane, fires, it comes out, no good, rebound to Miller, as the Tigers control, out to Ease, Ease to the front court, and they get down quickly, but he gets it to the wet, goes under, lays it back over his head, got it! Ease the wet, putting on the show, 21-13, Tigers up, as the Demons come back with Crenshaw, he gives it to front court to Foster, Foster to Spencer, moves it toward the right side, the people, he gives it back outside to Foster, dribbling, coming to the near side, the center goes for the lane, fires, off the iron, no good, rebound, Foster, we got a whistle of a foul, and I believe it's on Bill Harmon, as he went over top of Rick Harmon. And on Harmon, at number two, team foul number five, on the Tigers, so they'll shoot the one and one. As we get the... Uh, Stephon Murray checking in the ball game for the Tigers, and Bill Harmon will get a chance to catch a breather. And Stephon comes in. So that Ricky Harmon on the line for the Demons is the Tigers lead right now, 21-13. And Harmon will fire with the right hand. He puts it on the way. It is no good off the flange. Rebound pulled down by Miller as he and Murray both up for it. Gets it outside to Eve. Mike puts it on the floor. Cautiously moves it to the front court with a left-hand dribble. Now to St. Clair. St. Clair on the point position. To the right side, to Eve. Eve's on the wing. Looks underneath. They drive it to Miller. Miller works underneath. Puts it up and in. And Jimmy, one one on one with Crenshaw. This over fires him. 23-13. And Harmon into the front court where for North Fork. To Foster. To Spencer. Spencer in the top of the key. Has a knock. Who's we got a whistle? And we got a jump ball. Somebody tied him up. Is Eve or St. Clair one? I believe it was Eve. As you're right, it is Eve. He'll play, he'll jump against Spencer in the North Fork free throw circle. And he gets control by the Tigers as he's deflected in Miller. Puts the big lead hook out and grabs the ball. St. Clair driving down four. And boy, he really clobbered somebody, and that's what we got now. And a blocking foul, and St. Clair really cleared it out. And that foul right on Foster. <coughs> That's number one on Foster, but St. Clair absolutely cleared it through there. It's team foul number six. And I, I've seen fullback jobs that didn't go any harder in that box. Well, some of the, some of the Northport fans did not believe the call. I'm not sure that uh, he has a car favor, but we agree with it. St. Clair fires. Good. He'll have a second attempt. 24-13. Tigers out. A lot of contact on the basket, but not as much as we'd expected, really. St. Clair ready to fire. He puts it on the way. Got it. 25-13. It's Spencer with the ball in the backcourt for the Demons. The Tigers pressing. And it's off loose. Picked up by Eads of the Tigers. He takes it outside. Holds it up now. Waits for Tigers to turn to St. Clair. Fakes the shot. Top the key. Gets it to Eads. Eads will fire from 20 feet. Good. Mike Eads pulls the net for the Tigers. 27-13. And Foster will bring it to the front court for the Demons. To the left side to Spencer. Back to Foster. Lifts it to Bucket. Moves it to the right side to Harmon. Harmon back outside to Foster. To Spencer on the high post. Fires in and out. No good. Rebound front court. Miller's got it for the Tigers. It's Jimmy Miller with foul. And boy, Jimmy Miller going to the board with a throw in tonight. And let's see the foul is on. It is on Ricky Harmon. That's number one on Harmon. Have you seen Miller rebound harder, Bob? And, and Jimmy is actually dominating those boards more in this game than I've ever seen, uh, seen him dominate. Northport just come in with a complete new team. Right. Rob Pinson shot four times in the second quarter and hit on all four of them. Right. That's pretty good. That's fair. Right. Right. So they shot six times and closed the two free throws and they did on all six of them. And we got a timeout now. The Demons want a timeout. So with the score, Preston 27, 
North for 13. Turn the ball over against North. We're going to surprise them a little bit. Well, it, it, it is surprising. Now, unlike some of the other teams Preston's played, I think Jesse Fields is a junior. And uh, North Fork may be in the same position as Princeton is with some young, finessful ball players as opposed to the larger, more aggressive ball players. They've got four seniors out there, though, Bob. Which, that'd be why I was a little surprised. And North Fork's always noted for their quickness. Well, they're spawning four juniors. Now, but they've changed their line. They, they, they're really going with the super tunes this market. Yes, they are, and it, they, they're right in front of us when they go into the game. And Miller's ready. He's on the free throw line. He puts it up good. He'll have a second attempt now on that one-on-one. 28-13. -on -one. Tigers out by 15 now. As Miller will get a second attempt. He's ready. He fires. It's good. 29-13, and the Tigers pressing again. Michael Boyd with the ball for the Demons in the backcourt. They double team him. He gets it up to White. It's White. He gets cut off, and he gets in the front court to Brown. As Rennie holds it up now, waits for her help to come to him. Gets it to Mark Glenn. Now to Michael Boyd. Back to Glenn. Dropped it in the baseline to Jesse Fields. He loses it out of bounds as the Demons create the turnover. And the Tigers will have the ball out of bounds. Now the Demons are going to press. Let's see what the Tigers can do against their press. As the Witt will inbound it, and the inbound pass is full Put up, no good, and rebound comes down to Jimmy Miller. We got our jump ball. As the in court pass stolen by Kenny White. As he went down the lead up, he put it up short. Miller came to rebound. White cut him up for the jump ball. 29 13 now. Miller to jump against Kenny White. And the tip controlled by the Tigers as Mike Eves controls. Mike moves it to the front court to Jeff St. Clair. Jeff puts his traffic go by, puts it on the floor, moves it to the front position now. 1 3 1 zone defense by the Demons right now. And the Tigers spread now. Well, there's Lee. He goes under, has a knock loose. Picked up by the Demons. As Jesse Fields comes to the front court with it. Gets it over to Glenn. Puts the shot up real good. Rebound. Pull down by Eves of the Tigers. Gets it to St. Clair. Jeff running into the front court with it. Starts it toward the lane. Trying to leave it for Murray. Picked up by Murray. Knock loose. Picked up by the Demons. And Kenny Brown gives it to Michael Boyd. And Boyd brings it back in a helter skelter session right now. Boyd comes down and fires. Good. Michael Boyd hits it for the Demons. And they'll press again. As St. Clair with the ball, they double team him. And they throw it out of bounds. 29-15, and the Demons will have the ball in the Tigers' front court. Tigers have picked up three turnovers in the last 40 seconds. And the Tigers want a timeout to get this thing settled down. So it's 4.39 left to play in the first half. Princeton 29, North for 15. And we welcome you to halftime. Here's the Brush Fork Armory as the Princeton Tigers enjoying a 39-19 advantage over the North Fork Blue Demons. As the Tigers had 17 points in the first quarter, 22 in the second for a halftime total of 39. The, the Blue Demons, 13 points in the first quarter, only got six in the second quarter for a halftime total of 19. Halftime score, Preston 39, North Fork 19. We'll be back with the set. First, Chris Paul for this. And back at the Brush Fork half, the guard army taking a look at the shot charts for the first half. It shows complete dominance on the part of the Princeton Tigers and Coach Ralph Ball. I mean, the shooting percentage of the Tigers hitting on 16 of their 25 attempts for 64% from the floor. While on the other side, Jimmy Boyd's Blue Demons not having such success as they hit on only 8 of their 30 attempts for a very measly 27% from the floor. You don't see that from Jimmy Boyd's Blue Demons very often. Looking at the rebounding thing, side of things, the Tigers having an advantage there, an 18 to 11 markup over the Blue Demons. While in turnovers, the uh, Tigers suffering 12 turnovers in the first half, and the Blue Demons coming out on top of that category just a hair as they had only eight turnovers. In terms of individual scoring in the first half, for the North Fork Blue Demons, uh, Dwayne, uh, Robert Foster had one field goal for two points. Kenny Brown had was one of four from the foul line for one point. Michael Boyd had one field goal for two points. Jesse Fields had five field goals, two of two at the foul line for a total of 12 points. Mark Glenn had one field goal for two points. And Ricky Harmon was 0 of 1 at the foul line for no points. As Craig said, Norfolk had eight field goals. They were three of seven from the foul line. By contrast, to show Princeton's dominant, Princeton, Princeton had 16 field goals and were seven of nine at the foul line. In terms of Princeton's individual player statistics, Jimmy Miller had three field goals. One of those was a slam dunk. He was five of seven at the foul line for 11 points. And as we commented earlier, this may have been Jimmy Miller's most dominant rebounding uh, first half. He's going to have to, wasn't he? He sure, well, I think a lot of times Norfolk was substituting, trying to find somebody who could go in there and compete with uh, Jimmy Miller on the board. I think Jimmy Boyd is also surprised at the performance he's getting from James DeWitt this evening, too. Well, James DeWitt and Mike Eads uh, are tied for the leading score. Both of them have 
have six field goals in the first uh, half for 12 points. And Bill Harmon has one field goal for two points. And St. Clair was two of two at the foul line for two points. Preston had 16 buckets and seven of nine at the foul line. Now, he's just learning from outside the story. We're going to be back with commentary. First of all, first of all, 30 seconds for this message. As at halftime, the Preston Tigers enjoying a 39-19 advantage over the North Fork Blue Demons. And, Craig, as you get your headset back on, you and Bob, see if we can do a little bit of analysis on this. I think that the Tigers possibly looking sharper tonight than they looked uh, this year because uh, DeWitt, Heath, Miller, Harmon, uh, Murray, St. Clair, all playing spectacular ball. Right, and unless you're here to see the game, the score could actually be worse than it is. You had a couple of uh, missed, well, you had Jimmy Miller missing one dunk shot. Turnover. You had uh, Tigers had 12 turnovers. You had the 12 turnovers, Craig. You had uh, James DeWitt, who missed a couple of easy layups. Now, the other side, Norfolk uh, was not shooting well. They did miss a layup or two, but, but this could very easily have been even worse than it is in the first half. But James Boyd, the type of coach that he is, they will come out and play an entirely different second half. You can almost take the money to the bank on that. I think you're right, but I think that Jimmy Miller playing the lane defensively, especially by that defensive board, with more insisting to be more aggressive than we've seen him in a long time. That's very true. We were commenting uh, during the timeout that not only is Jimmy Miller having an excellent ball game, all of the Princeton team is having an excellent ball game. Mike E and uh, James DeWitt, uh, specifically, but all of the Princeton team just enjoyed a, a, a tremendous first half. This is only about my fourth time to see the Princeton Tigers play this year. And I was a little bit skeptical this morning when I saw the uh, area ratings of the Bluefield Daily Telegraph about the Tigers being rated number one. But if they could perform with this type of performance tonight, there's no doubt in my mind that they are the best team in the area. Well, I think that the, the Tigers are just now starting to come of age, as we've been saying all year, and that they were very young, needed experience, they gave me great, needed to gain confidence. And uh, as you know, in that second quarter, they looked like a, a team with a lot of confidence. They would come down and sit up and really take that ball inside, move it outside, come down and play defense, and not worry about Norfolk breaking them. Well, I think that showed in the second quarter statistics. They came down and they hit their first four shots in a row in the second quarter. And then, of course, they missed two or three, but they still ended up hitting nine, a 14 attempt in the in the second quarter. And I think this kind of threw the blue demons off a little bit because they only hit two of 15 in the second quarter. All right, now, Ralph Fall said the Tigers are dressing just sent them back out. What do you tell a team? You tell them to keep playing with intensity. You, you, you tell them to not get careless, to make sure they're passers, make sure they still block out on the board. But I guess that you're always worried about a team when you stretch out their lead like it's getting just a little bit complacent, losing a momentum. Well, that's, that's, that's very true. One thing that uh, also impressed me in the first half of the series, quickness that Princeton uh, had in that first half. And Princeton has to come out the second half and play with that same intensity where it can be. We only have one point difference in, the, in this game and the JV game. And I've mentioned that twice, but I've mentioned it one more time. At halftime in the JV game, it was 17 to 38. Preston was ahead by 21 points, and with three minutes to go in the fourth quarter, Northport had a five-point lead in that five game. Point lead. So uh, you have to continue playing with that intensity. You have to come out and uh, continue to hustle. You cannot afford to become complacent, and you have to come out and play your ball game in the second half just like you did in the first half. Okay, we're going to pause 30 seconds for this message, and we'll be back with more. The Tigers and the Demons, and right now it's Preston 39, Northport 19, and a surprising uh, lead for the Tigers. We thought it'd be a very close ball game. Fact of the matter is, everybody conceded they could go either way, and it still could for that matter. But Bob, what's the foul situation look like now? Well, for the Northport Blue Demons, uh, they have one player that's in, in real serious trouble, and that's uh, Kenny Brown with four fouls. None of the other players have more than one foul. Robert Foster has one, Mark Lynn has one, and Ricky Harmon has one. So the Blue Demons are not in, uh, except for Kenny Brown, not in serious foul trouble. They had 17 fouls for the first half. For Princeton, Jimmy Miller had two fouls, Jeff St. Clair had two fouls, and, and his two fouls came on two charging calls. One charging call, he looked like a fullback going through a <laughs> defensive line, and the second one, it looked like the other player might have been moving sideways with Jeff. But he does have two fouls, both of them came on, on offensive charging calls. Bill Harmon has two fouls, James Smith has one, and Stephon Murray has one foul for the uh, half, giving Chris 18 fouls for the first half. 
Oh, yeah, for some reason, uh, the Ralph Law must have thought the Tigers could run on the Beamers because they're running at every opportunity tonight. Well, it looked like they might have been a, a, a little bit of a step quicker than the Blue Beamers. That's right. They appear sure that way. They're just doing ten minutes on the clock. It's just for eight and a quarter, though. I'm sure right now Ralph would like to play two minute quarters. At this point, we'd like to play six minute quarters. Two minutes. Two minute quarters would be fine. The fact of the matter is, let's flip a coin for the one minute or two minutes and go home, huh? The Tigers up. Now, they're sending back out on the floor, and they haven't called the Tigers over. What is it, Craig? They're sending somebody over to the door over here. There's somebody going out to work on the goal with some type of hydraulic jack system. Well, that long. Well, the well, part of that goal looks like it's hanging a little down about a downhill on the far it side. It does. It's low on the rear. Huh? Tiger, you just got back. You went out to take a look at it. What do you got out there? Well, what has happened, these are movable goals, and when they are moved into position, they have uh, collapsible supports that come out and raise them off the wheels that they are moved on to support them. And what has happened is one of these collapsible supports has failed. It's uh, been stripped because they're a screw-out type support, and the uh, thread has been stripped, and it won't hold its position. So they're rigging up some type of jack underneath it to try to hold it stationary. Well, we've got a couple of hydraulic jacks to do that for them. As we get ready to start the second half of play, it's Princeton 39, North Oak 19. Do you hear that explanation, Bob? That the support it gets screws up to rock it off the wheel of the trolley, and the, it's been stripped, and down the threads have been stripped, and sitting down there putting a hydraulic jack in to raise that side back up to get it off the trolley. Okay. Now, one of the, the uh, criticisms of the brushwork carving has been that the goals over here have been bent down and are a little lower than they are. They are. I, I, I can witness to that because in, uh, in my own high school gym, I have trouble reaching the rim, and yet I can I can get uh, quite a few inches my arm above these rims. So uh, maybe it's psychological because it's a big room. A lot of people use that explanation. You give me enough step I can get my arm above any rim. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now they say we're ready. They've got it all worked out, and we got 16 minutes of basketball to go. Stay with us. The Tigers on top, 39 to 19. As we'll try to give you posting on the lineup as the Demons come over now. They're going, Demons sitting right to our left here with Coach Jennings Boyd, one of the real class gentlemen of high school sports. And the Tigers right down to our right, of course, with the Ralph Ball equally in class with Jennings Boyd or anybody else. Do you suppose the show is being listened to at Hinton tonight? Well, Ann's not with us. I understand she's in Radford. Uh, somebody told me that. Uh, whoever had ugly Harry Lake fellow up and took her home yet, and that told me that she was over in Radford tonight. So, uh, okay. if Ann's mother and dad's listening, uh, we certainly bid them welcome and wish they were here with us. But we kind of miss Ann down here, uh, because we've got Sergio sitting in with his eyes aren't the same. That's right. One, two, three, four, five. That's right. That's all he can have, isn't it? And the Tigers will be coming back out now. I see Mike Keith with a warm up off. Jeff St. Clair's got his off. That does Jimmy Miller. James DeWitt. And I can't. They're on screen on. Maybe. And Stephon Murray coming out for the Tigers. So the Tigers counter with the East, St. Clair, Murray, Miller, and DeWitt. Eight minutes to play in the third quarter, eight minutes to fourth quarter. Tigers 39, North Fork 19, as Fields moves in to jump against Miller. Fields is in the circle as Miller moves a foot in now. The official moving in as the player position himself still moving around from out there. And the official now puts the ball in the air, tip control by the Tigers as he does for him. Holds it up, waits for traffic to go by, gives it to St. Clair. As yes, out on the point position, to the near side, to the whip. As James gets Miller on the post, and across the lane, goes back the other way, fires good. We got a whistle, a foul underneath. That goal will be no good. Foul call on Mike Eads of the Tigers, jockeying for position underneath. And on Mike, that's number one. Team Palomar in the Tigers' second half. As Miller hit the field goal, but it went for naught. As the Demons go to the offense now, Michael Boyd takes it to the front court for them. To Foster on the far side, gives it back to Boyd, jumps to the top of the key, takes the shot, gives it to center. As he goes to Foster with a deep in the corner, outside the board, firing from 18 feet off the iron, no good. Rebound, pulled down by Foster, the Demons goes under, puts it up and got it. As the Demons will press, Mike Eads with the ball for the Tigers now, gets it to St. Clair. As Jeff starts it to the front court, still moving with him in the backwards, this is to Miller in the front court. As Jimmy holds it high over it to Eads on the far side. As Eads goes towards the free throw line, starts to back his way in, gets it outside to St. Clair. Jeff down the right side with it to Eads. Eads on the wing position, holds it high over it, looks for somebody to come to the high post. They get the win on the high post. He's firing, here is short, first the block, Eads rebound, puts it up, no good. Rebound, pulled out, front four, controlled by the Demons. Now it's pass the second, picked up by the Demons anyway. It's field control to Boyd. Back to Fields in the lane. He fires, it's good. As the Demons come back with two quick field goals, 
And he'll press again. He threw the ball to Biker and forced for the Tigers. To St. Clair. Moves it to the front court. Still on the dribble with it. Press it to the lane. To the wet. Goes under. We got a whistle and traveling call. <laughs> James, let me try to break it out a little bit for that time. He did. 39-23 as the Tigers have lost four points that lead. And the Demons with the ball now. And Boyd to the front court with it. Moves it toward the left side to Foster. He'll fire from 20 feet. Good. And Foster pounds it in. 39-25. As the Demons pressing still, as Eve with the ball in the backcourt, gets it to St. Clair. Mike to Miller, as Miller into the frontcourt with it, starts it in the lane, he fires good. Jimmy Miller gets the Tigers on the board here in the second half. And the ball was loose, and they stopped the clock as the Demon Tiger singled up, laying in the line, lane there, as Fields fell down. Now they're up and ready to go, as Boyd moves it to the front court now for Northport. To Spitzer, into the corner with it, dropped it on the low post. And we got traveling calls at Crenshaw. Crenshaw had the ball, couldn't get away from DeWitt and call for the travel. Well, that looked like a clean block. Yeah. Yes, it was. As DeWitt inbound the two. St. Clair, St. Clair beats the pass to Miller. Miller in the front court, that's to run the ball out. They got loose. Now he holds it up, gives it to Eve. Now to St. Clair. 41-25. As DeWitt with the ball, wing position left side. Holds it overhead, goes to Miller on the low post. Pins toward the lane, hooks it up and in. Miller hitting on that big right hand hook shot. 43-25, as Michael Boyd to the front court with it for North Fork. And Boyd out on the left side, comes to the top of the key with it. Gives it to Spencer, now to Foster in the corner. Foster back to Boyd, back to Foster, he'll fire from deep in the corner. It's on the iron, those are tipped up by the Demons and in. And tipping it up in the air with Jesse Fields. 43-27, as the Demons pressing again, as St. Clair foul in the backcourt. And this here, they call the foul on him. He's a Spencer, I think, isn't it? Dwayne Spencer. Dwayne Spencer call for the foul, and that's number one on Spencer. It'll be out to the Tigers in the side court, back court, as the wet will inbound it. And he gets an inbound to Mikey. Hands it to Jeff Sinclair. Jeff drives into the front court, goes under, tries to get it to the wet, and it's knocked out of bounds. And Miller says it's our ball, but the official says no, it belongs to North Park, so Jimmy lost that argument. Wonder if Jimmy thought he could win. So the Demons come to the offense now, trailing the Tigers 43 to 27, as North Park comes down with Boyd. To Foster, in the corner with it to field, back outside the boys, starts in the lane, leaves it for Foster, fine, good. He took that left hand shot up from about 12 feet. 43 29. As the Tigers have a knock loose on the inbound plays, they'll get it again, and they're locked to the position now as the wet will inbound it. And he gets it inbound to Mike Eves. As Mike in the back court with a behind the back dribble, still got control into the front court. He pushed off and no call on it. As he starts it to the near side, goes into the lane, fires, no good, rebound, pulled down by Boyd of North Park. As Murray cuts him off. He gets it over to Foster. Foster goes to the front court to Fields. Starts to fire out of the corner. Now he does fire. Good. Jesse Fields pulls the Demons within 12 of the Tigers. And Jimmy Miller brings it to the front court for the Tigers. As it knocks loose, picked up by the Demons. And Michael Boyd brings it to the front court for North Fork. And they've got it going their way right now. And Jesse Fields goes across the top of the key. They call him for traveling. That turns it over to the Tigers. And the Tigers take the settle it down. And the ball wants to tie out. He's signaling for the Tigers to slow it down. The Robert Foster and Jesse Fields have scored six field goals between them. And for Princeton, Jimmy Miller had two for all of Princeton's points. So he had three players that have scored all of the points in the second half. Okay, with 4.38 left to 4.28 left to play in the third quarter. Princeton 43, North Fork 31. We'll be back right after this. 43-31 as the Demons cut into the Tiger lead. Think what those stats look like. Tiger's not shooting real well right now. Uh, just, just a second. The, uh, the Demons, though, are shooting very well. They're shooting at 75 percent clips for this uh, third quarter, while the Tigers only hit it on 2 of 5. That's about 40%. Right, so they're going to get more the that the Demons are coming out playing with the type of confidence that the Tigers were playing with in the first half. It's right. just changed. As the Tigers will have the ball out of bounds in the backcourt, James DeWitt will inbound it on the far side. As DeWitt holds it overhead and gets it into Miller. Miller still in the backcourt with it. They double team him. He still got the ball. As it's off loose, picked up by Miller. Dribbles it into the front court now. Alley holds it up and gets it to St. Clair. The Tigers will suck their offense now. He's on the near side, goes to the baseline. Trying to run around Foster. We got a whistle and a foul on Foster. And on Foster, that's number two. Team foul number two on the Demons. It'll be out to the Tigers on the baseline. And the Tigers need to get the Demons in foul trouble, really, I guess. Get some uh, free throws on that one one. As the wet inbounds it to Murray. Murray gets it outside to Eve. He's run over top by Boyd. No call as Eve goes into the lane. Fires from the lane. On the iron, no good. Rebound pulled out by Foster the Demons. 
And across the left hand dribble, gets it out the field. Field goes to the corner, left side in the front court, gets it outside to Boyd. Michael Boyd on the dribble with it now. Back to Spencer, firing out of the corner, sending it out, no good, rebound, front court, put back up by Spencer, no good, rebound, put up again by Field, good. And the team has had three shots at it right there. And St. Clair with the ball foul in the back court. Oh, no, they call a the double dribble on St. Clair. 43 33. Ten point advantage for the Tigers now, but the Demons have the ball on the double dribble call against the Tigers. Spencer with the ball in the front court to Foster, the Boyd. Deep in the corner with it to Crenshaw. Gives it back outside to Boyd. To Fields, and Fields goes in the corner of far side to Foster. Gives it outside to Boyd across the top of the key. Starts toward the lane. He'll fire off. Balance puts up no good. We got a whistle and a foul underneath. Wait and Wayne Spencer. It is on Jesse Fields. And that's number one on Fields. Team foul number three on the Demons. As the Witt will unbound the ball for the Tigers now. As the whip gets it into St. Clair, they double team him in the corner. He gets it back to the whip. As James skips his way in the front court, holds it up now, looks for help. Gets it to St. Clair. St. Clair on the dribble with it, goes into the lane. Trying to get it on him, he has the pass in the center. And Foster brings it to the front court now for North Fork. Goes out, leaves it to St. Clair, puts it up in the end. And Crenshaw missed the layup, but Spencer gets it back. As the Tigers come back, ball is almost loose. Miller gets it to the whip. James into the front court with it now. As the Tiger leads, cut to eight. And just St. Clair with the ball out front, the Demons are going to let 3-1 zone defense. That's the Whit with the ball on the left wing. They're going to need with it to Miller. Trying to go through the sand, they got a technical foul. Position to grab the win. Foul number three on the Demons. Foul number three on the Demons. Foul number three on the as the Tigers trying to get something stirred there, trying to get Miller trying to get that slam dunk to get them all pumped up. Couldn't get it. Got call for the technical. And Foster fires the technical no good. 43-35. North Buffalo has the ball. Jimmy really hasn't tried to duck that ball very much this season. I think he's trying to answer Jesse Fields earlier in on this job. Settle down, play their ball game, and try to play as consistently as possible. All right, Michael Boyd to Foster. Foster to Jesse Fields for the Demons. Demons in the corner with it, outside to Boyd. Jumps to the near side. Leaves it for Spencer. Goes to the baseline, fires. Off the eye, no good. Rebounded easy to the Tigers. And Mike gets it out to St. Clair. Jeff moves it to the front court. Still on the move with it. To DeWitt. He'll fire out of the corner. On the eye, no good. Rebound, Foster is Murray. Trying to get a hand on it, and it's not going to bounce to the Tigers. If they call it out off the Demons. As they say that Quentin, Prince, Quentin Crenshaw knocked it out of bounds from the Demons. And DeWitt will inbound it. He gets it into E's in the corner, left side. To St. Clair. St. Clair way out front with it now. Back to way out to the center circle now. Starts it in. To E's on the near side. As they look for Miller down low, gives it to DeWitt on the high post. They've got a whistle and a foul underneath. And that is on Spitzer. And that's number three on Spitzer. Team foul number four on the Demons. So one more, and the Tigers will go one and one. And that could help somewhat now, right now. 43-35, Tigers lead by eight, and then bounce to Miller. To Eve, to St. Clair. St. Clair way out front with it, and he'll start to play. On the dribble now, to the left side, to Eve. Eve's looking underneath, they got Miller on the high post, firing from 14 feet good. Jimmy Miller, with the Tigers out by 10, 45-35. And Michael Boyd will bring it to the front court. To the right side, to Jesse Field. Starts around Murray, Murray cuts him off. To Crenshaw. To Spencer, firing out of the corner, no good. Rebound put up, no good by the Demons. Knocked out of bounds. Tiger ball. And Crenshaw, I believe, knocked it out of bounds, but it makes no difference. The Tigers will have it. 45-35 as the Witt gets it into Eads. He's in the backcourt. They love the team. He's looking for help now. As he can't get it anybody. Finally gets it to St. Clair. St. Clair racing in the front court. Got the Witt on this side. The Witt goes on the lazy up, no good. As the Witt is sick. And now we've got a foul. Michael Boyd charging. St. Clair, St. Clair, playing on the wing, was run over. And it'll be, that's number one on Boyd, team foul number five on the Demons. As the ball goes up in the stand, now they bring it back out. Well, had a beautiful one on a three on one fast break there, and he went to, uh, to DeWitt. Most of the players played good position on it. DeWitt missed the layup. Michael Boyd came out and charged through Jeff St. Clair. All right, so it's 137 left to play in the third quarter, 45-35. We'll be back with more right after this. Coach is out talking to the officials now during the timeout. Now that will be a player control the foul since the man with the ball free is a foul. Is he not shooting? And I will. Is that right? That's, well, since he's going to get the ball out, you're absolutely right. <laughs> uh, okay. Whatever, I, whatever you say, Bob. 
No, whatever he says. He's the one with the ball. Okay. Tigers come back down now. They've got Murray to win. St. Clair, he's in Miller. And they'll have it out of bounds on the far side. A minute 37 to play in the third quarter. 45-35. Tigers up. As he then bounds it to St. Clair to the win. As the win. On the dribble with it, holds it, leaves it for Eads. As the Tigers spreading it out, they're working a weave out front right now. Eads with the ball, takes it to the nearest, to the far side. Leaves it for St. Clair. St. Clair comes around behind him. They got Miller and Murray on the high post. The Witt on the wing right side now with the ball. As they're waiting for Miller to come out, now the Witt starts it toward the corner. He fires. It's on the iron. Good. As James the Witt hits from 16 feet. 47 35. As Michael Boyd brings it to the front court for Northport. To Spencer, deep in the corner with it, starts at the baseline, fires over Miller, Miller falls for the foul. Miller got a piece of that ball, but he also got him with his body. And number three on Jimmy, team foul number three on the Tigers, that'll be a two-shot foul. It's team foul number two on the Tigers, but it's a two-shot foul, shooting foul. A minute four to play in the third quarter, first and 47, North 35. In a hurry, Curry got the ball game here. As Spencer fires the first of his two free throws, it's good. This is Dwayne Spencer, his older brother, uh, Ronald Spencer played uh, up here for uh, North Fork and Blue Bill State. But Spencer fired the second one, it's good. And then they had another brother play at North Fork and Blue Bill State again. So the Tigers come to the front court now. And St. Clair brings it to the front court, has it taken away by the Demon. And Michael Boyd goes in the back court as the Tigers commit the turnover. Boyd on the dribble with it, brings it to the top of the key. 50 seconds to play in the third quarter. To Jesse Fields in the corner, back outside with it to Boyd. The back to Fields, he'll fire from deep in the corner off the iron, no good. Rebound, fuck for on the floor, picked up by Fields, starts in the lane, fires no good, they down the middle, and he really tore it out of there, we got a foul on somebody, and Foster complaining about it, but it may be on Foster, it's on Jesse Fields, that's number two, and team foul number six on the demon, so Jimmy Miller goes to the free throw line to shoot a one and one, 36 seconds left to play, first and 47, North Fork 37, Getting off the bench for the blue demons is Martin Glenn. He'll check into the lineup. And Jesse Fields will check out. They'll give him a breather here, about a 36 minute. get a minute or so breathing in the quarter breather before he comes back in on that. As Miller on the line now for the Tigers to shoot a one on one. And Jimmy will fire with the right hand. He's going down to our left. He puts the first one up. It's on the iron. No good. Rebound pulled down by the demon. Gets in the front court to Foster. Moves her up. Puts it up. No good. Rebound to Miller. Miller hustling back down to pick it off. St. Clair with the ball. Moves it to the front court for the Tigers. Drop loose. Picked up by the demon. A going down with it is Brown. And Crenshaw goes under. Gets it to Foster. Puts it up. No good. Miller rebounds again. 17 seconds on the clock now. And he's with the ball for the Tigers. Into the front court with it. As the demon sliding down the bridge. Picks up the ball for the Tigers. He is fouled. And that's on Foster, I believe. Of course, I think the last night I was on Foster. Foster's in everything. That's not on Foster. That's on number 20. Yeah, it is on Foster. That's number three on Foster. That's Foster diving headlong at that ball. That's number seven on the Demon State. That's we'll have Stephon Murray on the free throw line for the Tigers. And Foster diving headlong for that ball. Trying to knock it loose. Both Foster's missed too easy. Uh, as Murray fires the free throw, no good. Rebound tipped out to Murray. It's on the floor. And it was travel for it. Murray's kicked up. We got a foul on the Demons. Well, Williams called for the foul as he was climbing over top of Seth on Murray to get to the ball. That's number two on Glenn. Now they're going to put Eads or Glenn on the, or Murray on the free throw line. They're both in that lineup. I guess they're going to give it to Eads and Benning at the line. But I thought he fouled Murray. <laughs> because there's a mass of bodies that were actually uphill from over sitting. Okay, Mike Eads will shoot the free throw. He'll shoot a one-on-one. He fires the first one. It's good. 48-37. Eads will have another one. There's four seconds left to play in the third quarter. As Eads on the line. He fires with the right hand now. He's still got it on the way. It's good. 49-37. As the Tigers pressing, Murray takes the pass away. Puts it up in the air. And it's up on. Converts it. And he's going to end with a score. 51-37. He hasn't put it on the board yet. Now it is. So here the third quarter of play. Princeton 51, Northport 37. And we'll be back with more. First, let's pause for this. Carter with the score 51-37 and getting ready to start the fourth quarter of this ball game. In that third quarter, Jesse Fields from Northport and four field goals. Robert Thomas with three field goals. Dwayne Spencer field goal and two foul shots for 18 points. They had eight field goals, two of two its foul ups. For Princeton, Jimmy Miller had three field goals. He missed his only foul shot. Mike East was two of two at the foul line. James DeWitt had one bucket. Stephon Murray had one bucket. 
Princeton had five field goals and two or four at the foul line for 12 points. So it's great comment while we were on break. Northbrook had 18 points as compared to 12 for Princeton. All right, we're ready for the fourth quarter. Craig, are you got anything to add right now? Well, the Princeton Tigers making a uh, slight comeback there in the second part of the third quarter as they uh, eventually ended up shooting 42 percent in the third quarter. While the Demons starting off hot missed their last uh, eight or nine shots in a row, and they ended up with only a 36 percent of shots in that uh, third quarter. But still, yet I think uh, the Jimmy Boys got them back on the right track, and I expect to see uh, by the end of this ball game a uh, Jim Bandy. All right, Tigers come out with Stephon Murray, James DeWitt, Mike East, Jeff St. Clair, and Jimmy Miller. As the Demons come out with Crenshaw, Glenn, Fields, White, and Foster. And we'll have Fields in the jump against Miller. As Miller stepped in, now he steps back out. Fields in the circle waiting. Now Miller comes in. And the tip up. And it's controlled by the Demons. And they got the tip for the first time tonight. And Crenshaw picks it off. Gets it to the front court to White. White goes to the corner with it. Gets it out front to Foster. Gets it right back to White. He's on the wing right side. Back to Foster. Top the key to Fields on the left side. Back to White. To Glenn. To Foster. Fine from 20 feet. Good. Foster. Makes it 51-39. Tigers up. As the official stops the clock to get the loose ball, and they're pressing. The demons pressing the Tigers. St. Clair with the ball. Gets it to E. D. into the front court with it now. Goes down. Fires from 12 feet off the iron. No good. Rebound. So then we got a jump ball as Murray tying up with Robert Foster. Check it. The Witt tying it up with him. It'll be the Witt and Foster to jump in the North Coast free throw circle. As the Witt and Foster ready to go. And the tip picked up by the demon. As picking it up was Robert White. White goes to the Kenny White. So White goes to the front court. He grabbed one of the double dribble, didn't get it. Gets it to Fields. Fields has a knock loose by the wind, picked up by St. Clair and the Tigers. Wait for traffic to clear. And Jeff brings it to the front court for Preston now. As Northwood goes to a man to man defense. As he's with the ball on the far side, comes into the lane, has a knock loose, picked up by Foster of the Demons. And they get it over to Fields as Jesse goes to the front four with it, left side, skips it way down, goes to the corner, he'll five and twenty feet, in and out, no good, rebound to Mike Eves of the Tigers. Gets it to St. Clair. Jeff, on the dribble with it, waits for it to clear, comes to the front court now, in the point position. And St. Clair, toward the right side, now comes back to the near side to the wit. The wit on the wing, left side, looks underneath. Now they got White coming into the, got E coming in here, foul by Mark Glenn as he's coming into the high post with foul from behind and on Glenn that's number three and that's what he's on the line to shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, one thing we might comment on is Princeton's only committed two personal fouls in the second half. And Northbrook has eight personal fouls so far. 642 to play in the ball game. Princeton 51, Northbrook 39. As Mike E's on the free throw line to shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. He fires. It is on the iron. Good. He got front iron and back iron but it dropped. So he'll have a second attempt now. And Mike Eves will get one more. He fires. It's good. 52, 53, 39. As the Tigers have a press with the road, now they drop another thing with it a little bit. of straight man to man. No zone traps. As Murray pins some pressure on White. They get it over to Foster. Foster in the front court with it. The field deep in the corner. Throws it right on by. Mark Lynn out of bounds. It'll be Tiger ball on the back court. As the Demons set their press, the West gets it into Jeff St. Clair. Jeff on the dribble with it. They triple team him on the far side. He gets it over to Eve. He's in the front court with it. Their side now. Holds it up. Wait for St. Clair to come to him. They go to St. Clair. St. Clair gives it right back to Eve. He's searching down the left side. Now he goes to the Witt on the baseline. He'll fire from 14 feet. Good. James the Witt hammers it in. 55 to 39. As the Tigers lead, Norfolk comes back with a slant. Fine with far side. No good. Slant foul over the top of. Eves or St. Clay, foul throws up. Let's see what one they they shoot with. And on Mom, uh, Glenn, that's foul number four on Mark Glenn. Yeah. And it'll put one of the Tigers, put uh, Mark Eves on the free throw line for the Tigers. He'll shoot a one on one as Demons come in with some tight feet. And they want a timeout. So it's 6 6 left to play in the ball game. Preston 55, Norfolk 39. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we're back with 6.06 to go in the fourth quarter. The score 55-39. Princeton increasing its lead over the North Fork Blue Demons. As we were commenting, Jimmy Miller had 17 points in this ball game to, to this point. James Wood has 18. And Mike East has 14. St. Clair and Harmon both each have two. And Stephon Murray is 0-2 at the foul line. Or has two points. 
What was your question, Craig? I noticed the official was saying something to you. What was that? He's asked me I had a towel to wipe sweat with, and I told him I didn't have one. He had to wipe his shirt. <laughs> We're sitting right down beneath the floor level, and uh, I don't have anything. We're not sweating. <laughs> yes. So I'm very comfortable the way the game has gone up to this point. We're Mike, up some wood. <laughs> Mikey's on the line now for your fire. If he fires the first three, though, it's good. He'll have a second attempt. But Jimmy and Boyd is sitting right down here beside me, and he doesn't look too comfortable. He's not cool, is he? <laughs> He's ready for a second attempt now. 56-39, Tigers up. He fires. Good. 57-39, and the Tigers will press. As the team is trying to go on the fly, fight and taking away. It's picked up by Ease as Ease gets the ball. These are for St. Clair's. The Tigers go to the offense now. To the win on the near side, wing position, holds it overhead, looks underneath. Now he starts it across the top of the key, looking underneath, leaves it for Ease. Ease on the wing, comes out, looking for Miller. They can't get him open. Miller spins his way out. Now they come back outside to St. Clair, they'll start it over. Now they got Miller on the high post. Ease in the corner, takes the shot, gets it to Miller in the lane, goes down the lane. We got a traveling call. As Miller working his way under for his slam dunk again, foot, shuffle the foot. 57 39, Tigers up. As as Demons come to the offense, Foster with the ball to Michael Boyd, to Spencer, Spencer on the wing, deep in the corner with it, to Harmon, check out that is Crenshaw, took the shot up, knocked loose, and it's out of bounds off by Demons. That was a block by uh, James DeWitt. The ball was out of bounds when they called the Princeton ball, and I think James DeWitt blocked that ball. Okay. As DeWitt inbounds it to St. Clair, we got a whistle and a foul, and that is on Kenny Brown of the Demons. That'll be number five on him, as he fouls St. Clair in the backcourt. And that'll put Jeff on the free throw line for the Tigers. He'll shoot a one and one. 57-39, Tigers up. As the official comes over and tells Jennings Boyd, now Kenny has fouled out. And of course, Jennings has got 60 seconds to get a player in. He doesn't take that time. He sends Kenny White right off the bench immediately. Jeff St. Clair on the free throw line for the Tigers. Huh? He'll foul one and one. Mike Eads comes over to get some instructions from Coach Ralph Ball while Jeff's on the free throw line. Now we're ready as Jeff will fire with the right hand. As he fires, it's good. He'll have a second attempt. 58-39. The Tigers are warm out from the free throw line tonight, haven't they? Uh, the field goal's been gone. The free throw's also, I'm sure. But Jeff ready to fire once more. He fires. It's good. 59-39. Tigers back to a 20-point lead now with 5.27 to play. As Foster breaks the press, gets it to the front court for the Blue Demons. Brings it over to Crenshaw. He fires up the baseline. Good. Crenshaw hits it for the Blue Demons. As they'll press. He's with the ball in the backcourt for the Tigers now. Gets it to Miller. It's not loose. Picked up by White of the Demons. It's not loose by St. Clair. Now knocked out of bounds off of St. Clair. And the Demons will control. Kenny White will play it. Well, the Tigers really weren't set up to bring that ball up against the press. I think they were rushing a little too much, maybe. And White inbounds it. Brings it way outside to Boyd. Goes to Schiffer in the corner. Back to Boyd. To Foster. Firing with top of the key. Good. Foster hits it from 20 feet. 59. To 43. And St. Clair gets the ball to Miller on the front court. Jim, double team, gets it to Mike Eads. Aziz on the far side, working against that north fourth presser, trying to double team. As the ball knocked loose, picked up by Boyd of the Demons. He brings it back to the front court, fires over top of St. Clair. Off the iron, no good. Rebound to Spencer, fires out of the lane, good. And Spencer brings the Demons to them 14. And the Demons take away the escort pass it down to Whitfield and back. And James brings it to the front court for the Tigers. He'll fire from 12 feet, it's on the iron, no good. Murray trying to tip. Ball is on the floor, and Murray's trapping. And that's out of bounds and belongs to the Demons. That could have been called a jump ball very easily. And now the Tigers want time out because they need to talk it over and settle it down. So it's 426 to play in the ballgame. Princeton 59, North Fork 45. We'll be back right after this. But the Tigers losing a little bit of their lead now. The, the game is, uh, the Tigers had a lead, but they, the momentum is shifting a little bit, and the Tigers got it back after they lost a little bit there in the third quarter. Now, can they settle down and bring it back again? Well, with 4, 426 to go in the uh, fourth quarter, they all, I think they're going to have to settle down, and they're going to have to take patience. And, and they, they, played, they played a good ball game, but they played an erratic ball game in spots. They, uh, they've had the uh, layups, they've bounced out, they, they've... Uh, I think where the Tigers having trouble when they come down on the uh, break, they're forcing a fast break that's not there because when they really take the time to try to work it to the baseline, they can usually get a shot. Right. So let's see if that's what they do. That's the Demons. Bring it to the front court now. Michael Boyd on the dribble with it. To the right side to Spencer. He's on the wing. Starts toward the lane. He'll fire from 23. Gets off the iron. No good. Step on Murray. Up above the rim to pull it off. Gives it over to Jeff St. Clair. St. Clair. 
We'll move it to the front court for the Tigers with four minutes, ten seconds to play in the ball game. Tigers up by 14. He's with the ball out front now for the Tigers as they weave it to the Witt. There's the Witt coming out as the Tigers into their version of the four corners. As the Witt trying to get to Miller has a Foster firing the top of the key. Good. Boy, he'll find him with that 20 footer. He is deadly. 59-47 with 3.45 to play as the Witt gets it into Jeff St. Clair. Gets it back to the Witt. The Witt into the top floor with it now. Works on boy. Do it down. Fires. Good. Foul on the Witt. Charging foul. And the bucket was good. And on the Witt, that's foul number two. Team foul number three on the Tigers. So it'll be North Fork ball on the baseline. And Jesse Fields gets all that North Fork bench to come in. They've got him left it there. And they need the fire power. Jack Witt thought he'd pulled up uh, and took that little jump shot pretty pretty cleanly there. As a sophomore, he has a little trouble going to the bucket right on that one-on-one, I guess. He, 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 he'll pull up and put the ball up too high. I guess he's been called for that foul, been cautioned about it, and that time he did get called with a foul. 61-47, Tigers up. And Foster with the ball in the front row with for North Fork. To Michael Boyd, to Jesse Fields on the near side. To Crenshaw in the corner, back to Fields. He'll fire him 17 feet, good. 61-49 as the Demons are pressing the Tigers. St. Clair with the ball in the backcourt. Gets it to Miller. As Miller holds it overhead, gets it in the frontcourt to Murray. And Stephon dribble flash and now holds it up and gives it to Mike Eads. Mike gives it to St. Clair. Jeff way out of the center circle to James DeWitt. DeWitt comes across left to right. Leaves it for Miller. Miller way out front now. Guarded out there by Crenshaw. On the dribble with it and with their jump ball. Five second call between Miller and Crenshaw. 2.58 to play in the ball game. 61-49. Tigers up. Jump ball, center circle between Jimmy Miller and Clinton Crenshaw of the Demons. It almost doesn't seem the press is taking this game serious at this point. They're, they're playing with that basketball, uh, and they're not concentrating on what they should be doing. As Crenshaw moves in, Miller moves in for the jump ball. As Foster changes his position on the line now. And now the tip controlled by the Tigers as Miller went out and picked his own tip up. <laughs> Gives it to Mike Eads, and he jumps to the front court with it for Princeton. Now, you're supposed to see that. As long as nobody beats you to it, I guess. <laughs> so the win with the ball on the wing left side. On the dribble now. Being guarded by Fields. Starts it into the lane. Leaves it outside for St. Clair. St. Clair goes across the lane. Leaves it for Murray. Murray gets it to Eads. Eads on the weave outside with it. On the dribble. Still on the dribble. Starts it inside. They double team him. Gets it to St. Clair. St. Clair back to Eads. Goes under his foul. And that foul they call on Kenny White, I believe. That's number one on Kenny. That should be a two-shot foul. It is a two-shot foul. Two minutes and 30 seconds to play in the ball game. Princeton 61, North Fork 49. And I think the foul situation may be a, a key to North Fork's comeback. Princeton is still, well, North Fork is still not on the one and one. Princeton has to pick up another two two uh, personal fouls before North Fork will even be on the one and one. As he fires the first free throw, no good. Off the side of the iron. He'll have a second attempt. 61, 49. Princeton is 15 of 21 at the foul line tonight. As he fires, good. 62, 49. 16 to 22. As Fields gives it to Michael Boyd, and Michael Boyd brings it to the front court for North Fork. Brings it to the right side. Quarter court with it. Gives it to Foster. Back to Boyd. Goes into the corner. As they leave it underneath to White. Taken away in there by Stephon Murray. And Murray fights his way clear of that ball and gives it to Miller. Miller to ease. As Mike double teamed in the back court. Gets it to the front court to the wit. Gives it to Miller. Goes into the lane. Just a little off to Murray. Goes under. Has the shot blocked. And the ball knocked out of bounds. And they give it to the Demons. Two minutes and three seconds to play. There are several players on the floor. They get loaded to the feet. The Demons will have the ball out of bounds. Jesse Fields will inbound it in the backcourt. 2.03 to play. 62 to 49. As Michael Boyd will bring it to the front court for North Fork. Comes down to the top of the key. He'll find the whip. Block the shot. Boyd pulls it out of the air. Give it to White. He fires off the baseline. He is fouled by the whip. And that'll put him on the line. That'll be two shot. That's number three on uh, James DeWitt. Team foul number four on the Tigers. And that will put Kenny White on the free throw line for the Demons to shoot two. And we got a minute, 53 seconds now to play in the ball game. Less than two minutes. And the Tigers enjoying a 62-49 advantage right now over the Demons. That's White. Ready to fire. He fires the first one. It is good. He'll have a second attempt. 62 to 50. And Kenny White will have one more attempt. He fires. It's good. 62 51. 11 point advantage for the Tigers now. DeWitt inbounds it to St. Clair. Demons pressing. Gives it back to DeWitt. DeWitt holds it up in the backcourt. They double team him. Gets it to St. Clair. Jeff into the front court with the Miller. Goes under. Slams up. Miller. Slams it in. 64 51 now. A minute 39 to play the ball game. 
Davis. Kitty White brings it to the front court for Northport. Fired from 20 feet off the iron. No good. It is not loose. Picked up by Floyd. A redeeming team. They pass over by the whip. As the whip. Gets it over to Miller, and he moves it out of bounds. So Jimmy goes up into the nickel seats about the fourth row. Says hello to a lot of people he knows and comes back onto the floor. 64-51. Tigers up by 13. A minute 25 to play. Coming into the ball game for Northport right now is Mark Glenn. Coming out will be Robert Foster. As Jesse Field will inbound it. He gets it down to Michael Boyd. Boyd on the dribble with it. Comes across the top of the key. To the near side to Glenn. Back to Boyd. Firing from 20 feet. Good. The win inbounds it for the Tigers. To St. Clair, back to the whip, they double team in the backcourt, he gets in the front court to Mike Eads. As he's on the dribble within the far side now. Waits for the traffic to go by, gets it to the near side to James the whip. He holds the ball, waits for somebody to come after him. He starts it in the lane, goes down, lays it up. No oh, good, real in and out. 64, 53, 57 seconds to play. And Northport comes to the front court with it. Michael Boyd bags from 15 feet off the front iron, no good. Rebound stuck around, pulled down by the whip. As James comes out with it, and the dribble within the backcourt. Still on the dribble, gives it to Miller. Miller in the front court with him now. Looks around, and he comes to him. He can see he's a foul from behind by Boyd. And Bill Holland comes back into the ball game for the Tigers. That's number three on Mike, and number two on Michael Boyd. 40 seconds left to play. The Tigers enjoying a 11-point advantage. We'll have Mike Eads on the free throw line. 64, 53, and Mike Eads to fire a 1-1. And one. Puts the first one up, pull it short off the front iron, no good. Rebound tipped around. Harmon's in the flame, bullet picks it up, comes out with it. Give it out to Eve. Eve goes way outside with it. They'll start the offense from out there to weave it. As Eve gives it over to St. Clair. St. Clair back to Eve in the key. Puts it down to Miller as a knock loose, picked up by the Demon. As Crenshaw goes around to Wood, intercepts it as the Wood comes back, fires from 16 feet on the iron, no good. Rebound underneath of the Wood, puts it up and in. James the Wood, following his own shot, put it up and in. 66, 53, 12 seconds on the clock as St. Clair comes up with a steal for the Tigers. And it's going right back by Crenshaw. He drives. Harmon hammers him underneath on the foul on Harmon. And Harmon hammered. Clinton, Clinton Crenshaw, that's number three on Bill. Four seconds left to play in the ballgame. Tigers out 66 to 53 now as the fans start to lead the Black Fork Armory. How about that, sports fans? <laughs> as we'll have. On the free throw line, Quentin Crenshaw, the blue demons, he'll shoot two shots with four seconds to play in the ball game. Preston, 66. Northport, 53. As Crenshaw on the line now, he fires with the right hand. It's on the iron, no good. He'll have a second attempt. A little too much oil on the fire. He got it in and out. He'll have a second attempt with it right now. He fires. It's on the flange, no good. Rebound comes down to Jesse Fields. He fires. Jimmy Miller calls for the goal pending. No doubt about it. He had his elbow over the rim. to slap it away. Two seconds on the clock now, 66 to 57. 66 55 as the buzzer at the end of the game. And that's it. Final score the Princeton Tigers, 66. The North Fork Blue Demons, 55. And we'll be back with more. First, let us remind you the ball game brought to you on the AM band the Mercer County Bank, Amart, Don Duran Oldsmobile, on the FM band the Pepsi Cola, Bruce Home Paving, Leggett, and County Country Wrestle. We'll be back with more right after this. Score, Princeton 66, North 455, as the Tigers playing with a vengeance here, put together four quarters of 17 points, 22 points, 12 points, and 15 points in the first two of the fourth quarters for a game total of 66 points. The North Fork Blue Demons getting 13 points, only six points in the second quarter, and that was their undoing, as they got 18 points in the third quarter, 18 points in the second and the fourth quarter for a game total of 55 points on the night. Final score, Princeton 66, North Fork 55. We'll be back. The set first with pause for this. Final score, Preston 66, North 55. As we see Jack and Joe White come walking by to enjoy the ball game. As we're waiting on a stat sheet from somebody. Anybody got one ready yet? As Craig says he's ready with his stat sheet. All right. Well, he said now he needs another 30 seconds. As we're saying here, Jack, what's your name? Take the Tigers ready now. That's best they look this year. Yeah, keep the cool. As Jack White said, they need to cool the motor and want some rocks and they don't burn the clutch. Yeah, well, they shot real well. And the Tigers victorious, running their record now to 7-3 and three on the year. And I'll enter that score on my handy-dandy little score chart. 66-55. You ready, Bob? <laughs> I've, got all, I've got the statistics here for them. Okay. Individual statistics. For the Northport Blue Demons, Ken White was 2-2 two two at the foul line for two points. 
Robert Foster, who had one field goal in the first half, came out and hit six in the second half for a total of seven field goals. He did not go to the foul line. He had 14 points. Dwayne Spencer had two field goals. He was two of two at the foul line for a total of six points. Kenny Brown, who fouled out of the ball game, was one of four at the foul line for one point. Michael Boyd had one field goal for two points. Jesse Fields had 11 field goals, was two of two at the foul line for 24 points. He was the game's leading scorer. Mark Glenn uh, had two field goals for four points. Ricky Harmon was 0 of 1 at the foul line for no points. And Crenshaw had one field goal. He was 0 for 2 at the foul line. And he had two points on the game. In terms of team totals, they had 24 field goals. They were 7 of 15 at the foul line. For Princeton, Jimmy Miller came in. He had seven field goals, five of eight at the foul line, and 19 points on the ball game. Slightly off of Jimmy's uh, uh, average, but a good game for Jimmy Miller. Mike Eads had six field goals. All of his field goals were in the first half. He was seven of nine at the foul line, and he, like Jimmy, had 19 points on the ball game. Jeff St. Clair, who did a good job as the point guard tonight, was four of four at the foul line for a total of four points. James DeWitt had 10 field goals on the night. He did not have any attempts from the foul line and a total of 20 points. Stephon Murray, who came in and added a lot of hustle to the Princeton team, had one field goal. He was 0 for 1 at the foul line and two points. In terms of total, Princeton had 25 field goals and they were 16 of 23 at the foul line for their uh, margin of 66 points. Okay, you're looking at the shot charts for the game tonight. Of, uh, <laughs> testing, testing. Uh, for the Princeton Tigers, having a little bit of problems from the floor in the second half, shooting 9 for 20, 45%. For the game, they gave them a 25 for 45 for the floor, 56% for the floor for the Tigers. While they uh, had problems with the turnover department with 30 of those, but they also pulled down 30 rebounds during the course of the game. For the North Fork Blue Demons, of course, they shooting a little bit better in the second half. 16 for 37, 43 for 6. Heard that they're 27% in the first half. Come out with a 36% shooting percentage in the second half. While they pulled 28 rebounds, of course, compared to 30 for the Tigers. And they committed nine turnovers for the second half. The uh, game total of 17 for the North Fork Blue Demons. We got Coach Ralph Ball stepping in alongside of us now, and uh, Craig, uh, these game totals. Uh, totals are on the far side here. Turnovers, rebounds, shooting percentage. It's a shooting percentage right here. Yep. Okay. Tiger, uh, we got Ralph Ball. First of all, Ralph Ball, how do you feel now? Well, it's great because we beat a real good ball team, and we played consistent ball throughout the game, and it's good to play that way. And also, North Fork wanted this game as much as any game they played all year. Um, they've got a great ball team, and uh, uh, they've played a little more in spurts, and we've played a little more consistent. I think that probably was a big difference. I think that's true, but now, for the game tonight, the Tigers shooting with the percentages that I think you expected them to shoot with this first season, hitting 56%. Well, we've been shooting about that on the uh, year. We've been, I think, over 50% just about every game, and uh, we try not to take too many bad shots if we can, and, uh, but tonight, they, uh, I don't think we put up a bad shot. Well, uh, the thing that, uh, I guess, early in the first quarter, the Tigers were real tight and committed several turnovers, but after a timeout, you settled them down, and they, they came back to start forcing turnovers, and then you went into a press, and that press really almost turned the game around right there, didn't it? Yeah, well, we've been pressing some off and on all year and uh, trying to uh, play it a little more. It's uh, maybe not, it doesn't get to about maybe as often as we like to, but it gets us moving a little bit more from our offensive standpoint. It gets us involved more, and, and that's why we use it to, to get what skills we can out of it and get us moving a little bit better. Uh, I know that you don't like to really single out individual players, but I, I'm going to ask you to, to come. You had seven kids after the night that really put forward a tremendous effort all night long, and, and I don't think the intensity ever let down for the bitter. No, they played real good. They, uh, they wanted to win the ball game, and uh, they, I think they got something to prove. Like they say, uh, they coming off of the state championship, and these boys were young, inexperienced kids, and people expected a lot out of them. And uh, every time we win a game, they say we're people uh, not as good as last year and what have you. And I think these boys are, they've got something to prove, and they're out to prove it. I think I think uh, they can play good ball, and they're going to try to play good ball. It seems to me that the, the Tigers tonight playing with a lot of intensity, but it seems as they go into the season that they, they are becoming 
with more confidence and more aggression uh, each time out. Now, they played a very aggressive game of the bats to bat. Now, I guess i got to really talk about Jimmy. Uh, so Jimmy Miller is really going to the basket with a lot of authority and aggression tonight. Yeah, he was. Jimmy played very aggressive, and uh, he's been playing more intense and uh, realizing that uh, there's a lot of things he's got to do, and his rebounding was outstanding. He yeah. brought his best rebounding game of the night of the year, and, and probably uh, against the biggest team he's faced all year. Well, the thing that I was concerned about before the game was that we all we know that Norfolk always has quickness and had physical strength. And yet the Tigers went in there and just went nose to nose with them. Maxim quickness for quickness and Maxim strength in the bucket all night. Our kids sleep well tonight, I have to say. And we've been, uh, like we say, we've talked about it before. We've been very conscious of rebounding. We've got to keep working on it and try to improve on the rebound. That's an important phase and probably one of the most vital phases, if not the most vital phases. And we um, have to uh, concentrate on it and try to improve. We're not that big and we just have to work at it. Coach, he went in at halftime with a 39-19 lead, a 20-point lead, and the kids have just played well in the first half, and I'm sure they did just about everything you asked them to do. What do you tell your team? I guess the biggest thing you worry about is, is not letting them, not getting them to let up or letting momentum get away. What do you well, they, uh, tonight they had a good lesson right in front of them. Their JVs was about 28, and just about got beat. I think they won by one point, so uh, they uh, was much aware of what they had a lesson right before them, so I think that helped them. They knew that. Uh, JV's had the battle for the night, and they was about 20 ahead of the half. So uh, we try to start the second half as zero to zero. We don't have nothing. They don't have nothing. We start over again. Now, Friday night, you go on the road and bring Briar East. Bring Briar East one of the real tough teams in the state this year, and they were unbeaten up till the night. They played Bluefield, I believe, at Bluefield tonight. And chances are they'll come out of Bluefield still unbeaten. Uh, it's hard to play a good ball can go green by eight. The gym is a very fine gym, but they get the lights or something that's out about it, and it seems like it affects everybody. Well, they play good, and um, they uh, you know, really have to play good to beat Blues. Well, the Blues has got a good ball team, and uh, they have to play very tough to win tonight, and they it very easy to lose tonight up there at Blues. Uh, some of the coaches said the Green Bay is one of the better teams they've seen. Beck, the coach said, I think it was the best team they've played. So uh, we've uh, got a tough one to look forward to here. Of course, you remember Green Bay East played, played the Tigers very tough last year in the final game of the season over there, and they've got everybody back, and they've got size, they've got shooting, they've got experience, and uh, on the road, it's just tough to beat that kind of combination. Yeah, they've got a lot of depth. They've got about 10 boys, I think, they run into now, and tremendous size overall, so it's going to be a real tough game for us to, to go over there, but like I say, that's what makes you tough. You've got to play tough ball to, to win, and you've got to play good teams if you're going to get any better. Coach, we appreciate you stopping by. There's little congratulations on a big win. Well, we were really feeling pretty happy there. We felt happy at halftime, felt even happy at the end of the third quarter. And the fourth quarter was out of sight. So congratulations on a big win, and uh, thanks for listening to us. Right. It's a pleasure. I, like I said, our kids really played a great team up to tonight. All right. Coach Ralph Ball of the victorious Christian Tigers. Final score, the Tigers 66, the Demons 55. As the Tigers move that record out to 7-3 and three on the year as they get it rolling. And we'll be at Greenbrow East Friday night to take on the Spartans. Game time is 8 o'clock. We'd like to have you there with us. If not, join us right here at Big Way Radio. The ball game brought to you tonight on Big Way Radio on the AM band of Mark and Bondurant Oldsmobile. On the FM by Pepsi Cola, Blue Stone Paving, Legacy, and Town Country Wrestling. I'm Glenn May, speaking for Frego and Bob Graham, saying we appreciate the fact that you've allowed us to be a part of your evening. The fact of the matter is, thanks so much for listening. Good night.